desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory, Glory to God, God Christ, and peace to you on earth, for God. Let us pray. 
O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name, for you never fail to help and govern those whom you set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. Our first reading is from the book of Genesis. The child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, cast out this slave woman with her son. For the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you, for it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named for you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder, along with the child, and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water and the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him a good way off, about the distance of a bow shot, for she said, do not let me look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy, and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's worship together by reciting Psalm 86. Bow down in the air, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and in misery. Keep watch over my life, for I am faithful. Save the servant who puts his trust in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for you are my God. I call upon you all the day long. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O oh Lord, are good and forgiving, and great is your love toward all who call upon you. Give ear, O oh Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the time of my trouble, I come to call upon you, for you are to me. Among the gods there is none like you, O oh Lord, nor anything like your works. All nations you have made will come out and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great, you do what must be saved, and you alone are your God. Turn to me and have mercy upon me. Give your strength to your servant, and save the child of your enemy. Show me a sign of your favor, so that the others who hate me may see it and be ashamed. Because you, O oh Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Second reading is from the book of Romans. Should we continue in sin in order that grace might abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? 
Therefore, we've been buried with him by the baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we've been united with him in death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to the twelve apostles, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign the, those of the household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell it in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted, so do not be afraid. You are more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledge me, acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I've come to bring peace to the earth. I've not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I've come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ.
give you thanks that you are the light of the city of God. We want to give you thanks that you are merciful, that you're good and forgiving, and that your love toward us is great. Lord, I pray for all of us present today, every heart here and online, that you would open our hearts even more deeply toward your great love for us in all of its dimensions, for we ask it in your name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, over the past few weeks, I've been sharing about fellowship, the fellowship of, of caring, the fellowship of being with one another. And today, I want to share about the fellowship of love. And I want to do that by way of an illustration from the creation. I think we can learn so much from the creation if we would just take a moment to allow it to speak to us. And what I want to share to you about, of all things today, is about bees, bumblebees. You know, you can learn a lot by considering the bees. Let me share with you. <laughs> First of all, they're very, very social insects. Um, I never felt that way about them growing up, given all the times I was stung by them. But they actually have a mutual feeding order. The workers feed the queen, the queen feeds the drones, and the drones feed the young. And researchers have actually found that the bees enjoy this social act, this act of feeding one another. Bees also cluster together uh, in winter for warmth. And they fan their wings to cool the hive in the hot weather. So here in Florida, they're getting a lot of wing exercise. And they find comfort in simply being together and helping one another get through their life. During swarming time, bee scouts, different ones of them, fly out to find suitable new quarters with different scouts reporting back from different areas. And when they report back to the hive, they, the hive kind of gets around them in a circle and the bees do a dance. <laughs> it's a bee bop or whatever you want to call it, <laughs> right? <laughs> Or a bee waltz. It could be all kinds of things. But you have a homework assignment already. I'm just getting started with this message. You've got a homework assignment later on when you go home. Go to YouTube, Rumble, BitChute, wherever you go, and put in the search bar, Bee Dance. And you, you will watch some of the most incredible dancers on the planet. I wish I could dance as half as good as the bees. So anyways, they perform this dance. And in the dance, they're communicating to the rest of the hive a really good location. And once all of the different scouts perform their dance, the hive actually makes a decision about where to go, and then they locate to the new hive. Interesting, isn't it? Um, actually, also, one other thing about a dance, the bees do another dance, and one of the dances is to communicate a good source of food. So what happens is the bees will dance, and they will communicate if they dance to the left at 90 degrees, they're communicating to the rest of the bees that there's a good source 90 degrees left of the sun. If they dance to the right 60 degrees, they're communicating to the bees that 60 degrees right of the sun is a good food source. Um, so just amazing, amazing things that the bees do. But what I, what I believe uh, these insects are communicating to us in the very nature that God gave them is a fellowship of love a fellowship of mutual caring, and that we have a lot to learn from them if we would just watch their behavior and what it's communicating to us. There's a reality among the bees of unity. There's a reality that they need to be together and work together if they're going to survive in winter or in summer. They need to be together as a team if they're going to make it through the life that they have. There's a care that they have for one another. They actually enjoy feeding one another and being together in a sense of community. And actually, I think they really enjoy dancing too. I can, I can see it by how they're dancing. They got it down. And out of this wonderful fellowship of love, there's honey. They make honey. Yum, I love honey. I don't know about you, but honey is one of my favorite things. In fact, you may have heard recently there was a discovery in one of the Egyptian pyramids. They had actually packed away some honey from the time of the pharaohs, and the honey was still good. Honey never goes bad. And, I, and again, I just think this is a miracle. If we would just take a moment to consider the miracles that are in creation, God could teach us a lot. 
So why am I sharing with this with you today? Well, first of all, because I think it's a wonderful illustration. And uh, I hope a few of you do my homework later on and go watch the bees dance later today. I think it'll really make your day. Um, and the other thing is I want to take a little time to look at a scripture from Philippians 2 that speaks about the fellowship of love. It says, be one in spirit and purpose with one another to make my joy complete, the Apostle Paul's writing. And then verse 3 talks about also in humility, count one another as more important than yourself. And I believe Paul is communicating something very key in terms of what it looks like for you and me to be a fellowship of love. And we spend a lifetime learning about this, just like the bees do. But it's important that we learn this and grow into what this looks like. First of all, spirit comes from the word suke. It means the soul of a person and their spiritual understanding. So your suke, say that with me, suke. 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 One more time, suke. suke. You learned Greek today. It took me months to learn those words, suke, for spirit. And so what this communicates is the idea of your unique soul. Every human being has a unique fingerprint. <coughs> and every human being has a unique soul. God knows you ex exactly for who you are and he knows your soul. Because he created that soul from even the, before the beginning of time. And so one of the realities that you and I need to realize is that our spirit, our soul, is incredibly unique. Incredibly precious and different before God. And this is the part of you that has spiritual understanding. This is the part of you that looks at life in a spiritual way. And so when you see those people that say to you, well, you know what, I'm a nothing, right? I'm a nothing, I don't really believe in God. I don't believe in anything, um, they're mistaken. They are a spiritual being. They may be out of touch with that aspect of their life, but every human being is spiritual because you were just created that way as well as your physicality. So spirit is the soul of who you are, your spiritual understanding. It says, be one in spirit and purpose. Purpose is the direction that you have in your life that is based on conviction. And so all of you have a purpose in your life. It might be in terms of your vocation. It might be in terms of your, your relationships. It might be in terms of your dreams or things that you want to do. But each one of you are unique in your purpose and and what you want to do and how you want to pursue your life. And that's a very important thing. And you know you have a purpose when somebody else gets in the way of it, right? You might be sharing your dream with somebody. You might be really, really excited about it. You can't wait to tell them because you want their encouragement and their support. And what do they do? They shoot you down. Or they come up with all the reasons why you can't do it. Anybody have a person like that in their life? Yeah, we all do, we all do. But you know, at that moment when that happens for you, that is a test of your dream. That is a test of your purpose. That is a test of your destiny. And it's very important that that test comes because at that point you have a choice. Are you gonna pursue your purpose? Or are you gonna leave it? You know, if that purpose is real, if that destiny is for you, you know what happens when that challenge comes against it? It grows even stronger. It grows even stronger. And that's a beautiful thing. Be one in spirit and purpose. And in humility, treat others as more important than yourself. You know, talk about a revolutionary concept in the moment in which we live. We live in a culture that exalts the self. To the point that you are the most important person. And whatever love is that you deem it to be, that's what it is. And it is a culture that is really self-centered. And what Paul is talking about in Philippians, what Jesus taught him from the very beginning, continues to be revolutionary. And that is the most important person in the room is not you, but rather I am calling you to affirm that the most important person in the room is your brother or sister. Oh, could you hear the silence there? <laughs> I, I felt it. I felt it. Oh my gosh, you can't be saying that. I'm saying that. I'm saying it again. God's word to us in humility is to count others as more important to our, than ourselves. And what that basically means is we need to value one another enough to listen to what we're saying. To listen to what the other person is saying. 
You notice again in our world in which we live right now, that is exactly what is not happening. Nobody is listening to the other person. Nobody even cares what the other person thinks. Everybody has an agenda. Everybody has their goal in mind of what they want to do and what they want to take. And they really don't care what the other person thinks. That's why there's so much hatred. That's why there's so much violence. That's why there's so much division and anger because that's the world of the evil one in which we live in. And that's what's being exalted in this moment. But we're not called to live in that way. We're called to live in the spirit of humility. So I want to reflect on this for a moment with you in terms of what this means for our communication with one another. Because this is one of the things that excites me about the bees. I love the bee dance because I'm not a dancer. I'm just a slow dancer. That's basically what I do. I do a slow dance. I would never be a break dancer or do the bee hop or anything like that. That's like, I'll watch you, I'll cheer you on, but that is not me. I'm so impressed by the bee dance because they really do it. And, and, and part of the bee dance, well, all of the bee dance is about communication. It's about sharing with the rest of the hive some really important information about food sources, about a new place to live, about fellowship, about community, and about this hive continuing to be able to live. It's about family. It's about the bee family. And so this idea of communication and reflection and decision is incredibly important. And what I want to share with us here today is that for us, that communication happens vertically with our with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And ideally, it's all supposed to happen, supposed to happen horizontally. And so this communication and reflection and decision making is very, very important. First of all, one of the things I want to share with you is the reality that most people on our planet and in our, in our lives really don't know how to communicate. And I'm just going to include everybody. So I don't offend anybody. I'll just offend all of you. <laughs> nobody, nobody really knows how to communicate. And the reason why I know that is because I've been alive for a while and I've kind of watched how this goes down. And this is what I've observed. Most of the time when two people are face to face with, you, with each other and there's some conversations going on, invariably what I see happening and what I hear people telling me after the fact is this person's busy sharing something. They're busy verbalizing or communicating what's important to them. And while they're doing this, the person who's supposed to be listening to what the other person is saying is busy already formulating in their minds what they're going to say or how they're going to respond. Or maybe after the first few words out of their mouth, you've had this conversation before, you know where it's going, it's already, it's already going to nowhere land and you're ready to shut them down already. Sound familiar? That is not communication. What is communication? Communication is when a person shares something with you and listen to this for just a moment. Get this. You actually listen to what they say. You actually listen to what they say. A few moments ago, I was in the Bible study that Paul does before our service in the morning. And as he was sharing, I was just sitting there and I wasn't thinking about my response. I wasn't judging what he was saying. I was simply listening to him. And I had awareness in that moment that I was simply being present. I was simply being present, allowing him to talk, allowing me to read his body language allowing me to hear what the Spirit was saying to me in, the, in that moment, simply being present. That is real communication that is going on. That's what that is. And that needs to happen, first of all, vertically. We need to not only let God know what we desire, what we need, and what we're praying for, but we also need to allow God to speak to us through His Scripture, through prayer, through the creation are you taking time to walk barefoot in the grass or along the gulf? Are you taking time to smell the flowers and listening to the birds? Are you taking time to allow God to speak to you in all of the multitude ways that God can in his creation? 
By the way, I was walking through our garden this morning. God was speaking to me the creation through the creation only this morning. And uh, Jan and I were talking the other day. Last year after Hurricane Ian came through, it, it killed one of our favorite plants, cranberry hibiscus. We just love this plant. We had one or two and they both died after the hurricane. And we thought, oh, bad news because we love the leaves on this. Long story short, we have a forest of cranberry hibiscus right now. I mean, literally a forest. And I was, I was saying to Jan, you know what, hon, do you think I should just cut off some of these leaves and give them to the people at church this morning? Because otherwise you're just going to die. And you'll never get the pleasure of experiencing God's communication to you through his creation of how great these leaves taste. 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 Yeah, they taste beautiful. Yeah, you eat them. You eat them. I had some of these in my, in my smoothie this morning. We've had them on salads. So what I, what I did is I have a bag full of these babies. I have a bag full for you. They're for you. They're already washed. I put them in white vinegar in the, in the sink this morning. I rinsed them off. They're all clean. We don't use any kind of pesticides or anything. It's all organic. I'll still be alive at the end of the sermon. <laughs> but you have to try one of these. Each of you, I have enough for one for each one of you. They are really good. This is like one of my favorite plants. But you see, we need to be open to God speaking to us through the creation as well. Go home later on today and have some honey. Have some honey. And reflect upon the bees and the unity and the care and the effort and the energy and the pollination that they do. And that isn't even the end product, the beautiful honey that they create for you and me to taste the sweetness from the hive. So you see, <laughs> the sermon was almost over. The sermon was almost over. <clears throat> This vertical connection with God is incredibly important. Your lives are so busy. You have so many things going on in your mind. There are so many things distracting you that you are truly not making a vertical connection. You are truly not being present to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You are truly not being open to the creation and the beauty of the sun today and the leaves and the cranberry hibiscus uh, and the honeybees and the breeze. You are missing so much. You are worried about the future. You are rooted in the past and the present is going by you like a fast car. God is in the present. That's where I'm trying to root you right now in communication to be present vertically with the Lord, to reflect on the beauty, to taste and see how good the Lord is and his creation, and then allow the Lord to speak to you in the midst of that. There's also horizontal relationships, our relationships that we have with one another. And this is, again, another area where we fail in communication. A lot of times, let's be honest, it's not about really communicating with one another, you come into your relationships with other people, we all do with certain baggage, with certain expectations, with certain experiences, and we never take time to hear one another, and we never ever give each other the chance to grow and to change and to become different. People can grow up, people can repent, people can be renewed, people can be transformed. That's part of the reason why you're here today, is you want God to change your life. You need someone more in your life. And you can receive that. And we need to have the grace with one another to give somebody else the grace to change. To have hope for them that they can become better. And to listen to that and to encourage that. So in your communication with one another on the horizontal plane, what I want to encourage you is like the bees to get all the information, to listen to this person and hear what they have to say to you. And maybe then you'll get some other information from this other person and their perspective of that relationship. And then maybe you'll get some more information from another person. And maybe you'll have some more information in your own head. Are you getting confused yet? 
But that's how you make a good decision. You need to communicate and take all of the scalp bees information in of all of these different places and possibilities and consider it and think about it and hear it and pray about it so that you can make an informed, conscious, intellectual, good decision. Vertical and horizontal are both very important in terms of hearing each other, and building this fellowship of love. One of the last things I'll share with you is this about this area of communication. There are, there are basically two kinds of people in, in this communication arena. There are, there's the group of people that have an agenda, and then there's a group of people that have acceptance. A lot of people, when you're in communication with them and you're sharing with them, you may be sharing an idea with them that you have, and you kind of have a sense that they're listening to you, but they're really not. Because they already have a plan, and that's the plan they want to execute. That's an agenda. You might be one of those people. What I want to encourage you is stop being an agenda person and start being an accepting person. And an accepting person is simply someone who will take the time to listen to what somebody else has to say. Guess what? God might be speaking through them to you. It just might be the case. In fact, God might be speaking through them to you, and guess what? Their idea might be better than your idea. Do you know everything? I mean, I'm not asking for a show of hands or anything, but <laughs> I just want to say there are some people in the world that really believe they know best. They know best for everybody, and they rule the roost. And I can honestly say to you, I've known a few of those people, and they really don't know best. They're totalitarian, they're oppressive, they're, they, they keep people in bondage. It's not good. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And there's the freedom to be who you are, and to share your voice, and to be heard. So if you're one of those people that has an agenda, if you're one of those people that are busy imprisoning everybody around you and creating anger and volatility and division and stifling other voices, repent. <laughs> repent of your sin, because it is. And move into a place of acceptance. Again, you can hear what somebody else says. You don't have to agree with them. <clears throat> I tell people during my marriage counseling, you can actually listen to what your spouse says and you don't have to agree with them. Just listen to what they're saying. That's all you got to do. Listen to what they're saying. And then say, you know what? I'll think about it. Or I think that's a great idea. Or you know what? We just have to agree to disagree. It's okay. It's called communication. If we as the body of Christ, by the grace of God, can even remotely begin to imitate the bees. If we can begin to be even half as good as the bees are through the power of the Holy Spirit, imagine the beautiful honey that the kingdom of God can bring afresh to this world in this moment. I'll leave you with one final thought that I shared a couple of weeks ago that I, is a quote that I was reading on my Instagram account that was, is very powerful even to this moment. I encourage you later on as part of your homework, you're gonna watch the bee dance, remember? This is the other part of your homework. You're gonna go to stjohnsnaples.com, that's stjohnsnaples.com, it's in your bulletin, and you're gonna click on the patio live stream link because that sermon's gonna be downloaded there today, and you're gonna write this quote out and put it in your journal or somewhere where you can remember it, and here it is. Sleeping in the same bed with someone doesn't make you close to them. Living in the same house with someone doesn't make you close to them. The only thing that makes you feel close to someone is when you can be open, seen, heard, and understood in your most darkest, vulnerable, and open times. If you can do this, everything else will work. This is why love is so powerful. It allows you the courage, humility, and strength to live into love's greatest expressions. Let's pray.
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that is what we pray for as your body today. We want to live into one of love's greatest expressions, and that's this fellowship of love, just like the bees who care for each other, who are a family, who do a dance with each other to communicate where the food is and a better place to live. Oh, Lord, we pray for that for one another in our communication with one another, that we would actually share and listen, that we would treat one another with a sense of humility before one another and value each other, that as we communicate with one another, that we would hear what is being said and that we would take time to reflect on it and then make a decision, that we would preserve our connection with you and preserve our connection with one another that we might make fully informed and blessed decisions. And Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as we do this, I believe that the sweetness of the honey of fellowship will be produced. It will be the most beautiful, nourishing food that will be attractive and drawing to so many people that are looking for love, that are looking for fellowship, and truly want to taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe. Continue in prayer, I invite you to be seated. Where's the people who are found in our bulletins? Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers to the work of the sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our world may find favor in your sight. And have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered Give to the departed eternal rest. To that light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. And let us pray for our own needs and those of others, particularly Marco and James. Marco and James. Tana and Jack. Tana and Jack. Louisa. Louisa, Darren, Darren, Darren Dorothy, Dorothy, Cindy, Cindy Jim, Jim, Carl. Carl. We pray for St. John's parishioners and families. 
St. John's parishioners and families. We pray for St. John's shop and charities. St. John's shop and charities. We pray for Samaritan Health and Wellness Center. Samaritan Health and Wellness Center. Emmanuel Community in Aleppo. Emmanuel Community in Aleppo. Touch of Love International. A touch of Love International. And we trust in Him. We trust in Him. Please add your own petition at this time. And let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of our Lord be always with you. Also Let us offer one another a sign of his peace. some of these cranberry hibiscus, I tell you. They're good. One is not enough. Um, well, it's great to be with all of you here today. So grateful for our fellowship of love that we share here. Uh, I just invite you to look in your bulletin for the announcements. These uh, cranberry hibiscus will be on the table as you head out today. And uh, just... Anti-inflammatory. right so enjoy and if you if you don't get one today let me know we'll bring back more next week let us walk in love as christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to god
be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return through prophets and sages. You revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he reconciled us. By his wounds we are healed, and therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their, your unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God, power, and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son of the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. As we continue in prayer, I invite you to be seated. And so, Father, we have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit. Now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. <coughs> Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in breaking the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. And all baptized Christians are welcome to receive at the Lord's table.
body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.